are you going to find any major differences in manufacturing and inspection in a diesel power plant versus standard piston? Is there any change that you're, you're going to have to deal with or any, uh, any culture shock to speak of? Yes and no. The majority of the diesel engine will be very, very similar from a general crankcase, crankshaft, con rods, cylinders, all of the mechanical side. The biggest change is really a change related to electronics. Wow, okay. And it's the same change we're going through even in our standard Avgas product. As we start moving to electronics, it represents a different mindset for our whole organization. Not so much on, you know, the guy making uh, cylinders, still going to make cylinders. The guy doing our parts components like uh, fuel assemblies and certain of the other things you see in this area, still pretty much the same. But when you get into the electronic control portion, our folks are going to have to start looking at a totally different system mindset. And that's, that is a change that we are starting to implement right now, which is rather than selling an engine and then an electronic fuel system, we're selling a power plant. It's all inclusive. An integrated system. An integrated system. And whether it's diesel or the Avgas, it's going to be that same approach. Aero TV is brought to you by... Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own, and easy-to-operate very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500. The jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Now this is one of the important things that I came to learn. You know, and I'll, I'll step on myself a little bit here, but there's a, a great deal of misconception that applying lots of goop mm -hmm. to the engine yeah, is what seals it. Mm -hmm. No, goop is bad. Goop of any type is bad. This is one of those areas, as much as you'd like to say we've taken the art out of the engine, this is one of those areas where it's still very much an art. Skilled guys doing it. There's a lot of care in making sure that string stays where it's supposed to stay. When he's all done, this is what it looks like. You notice it's not fully bolted out or anything. We're in assembly. Now this is where it all comes together, literally. Now. You remember I talked about visual manufacturing, and this is right now very basic visual manufacturing. If you were to go to the auto plants, Toyota plants, and some mm -hmm. other places, you'll see a lot of different queuing. But we're trying to crawl, walk, run mm -hmm. into a continuous improvement. Right behind you is a finished engine that's going through inspection, and it'll go through several more stages of inspection before it actually leaves the plant. Mm -hmm. But right here, that's a fully finished engine. It doesn't have to start assembly mm -hmm. with all of the parts. Aero TV is brought to you by... Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. I've told everybody when I've been interviewed, I've said, we're not good yet but we're going to get there. You know, this is an example of what we're working to do. You see green flags, you see different colored papers, um, you see some yellows here, you see some whites there. Mm -hmm. Nice thing is we don't have any reds in here today. Red is hot. You know, if we got a red there, we're trying to hustle that thing through. We're trying to figure out what it's short. But green flags are engines good and ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yellow flags are they're queued for next morning. Gotcha. So 
the end of the day, all of our managers will come in here from the various areas around the facility and they'll say, what's this table need since it's due to go in in the morning? Gotcha. Oh, I need Conrods. Well, where are my Conrods? Mm -hmm. you know, Conrod guy stands up and says, I'll have those at 6 o'clock in the morning off a third shift. You'll be good to go. Okay, bingo. Or, no, I don't have Conrods. All right, I won't have them until noon. Well, we need to swap a different table in. It, it rolls all the way through, and what we want to do is make sure as they hit a specific point in assembly, the next part pops in. Gotcha. Okay. And then what happens from here is, you know, he's going to do a full up inspection, make sure the build book's complete, make sure the engine is what it's supposed to be again, and look at everything, make sure it's got all the parts, they're tight, they do what they're supposed to do, walks through all those checks. It will then roll out of here, get mounted on a platform and head off down the road to test, where the engine will actually get put in a test cell, mm -hmm. get a prop put on it. We have an automated test system. The engine will get fired up and run through all of its paces mm -hmm. and dialed into final shipping configuration.